Hey, it's Mike here, and today it's time to look at the exorbitant climate cost of eating a carnivore diet. We're gonna look at what are honestly some conservative estimates for meat emissions and apply those to Carnivore USA, a situation in which all of the US decides to go on a carnivore diet. Why not? For those of you that don't know, a carnivore diet or an all meat diet is where people eat essentially nothing but meat. Some people say spices are okay, which is probably why they don't have scurvy because there's no vitamin C in meat. <laughs> there's a small corner of the US of social media that thinks that this is the optimal way of eating. And I really hope that they care about the earth, that they care about the climate and that they watch this video. We'll see. And what spurred the series of events that led to this video was a couple of you sent me this little piece of uh, anti anti-vegan carnivore propaganda, highlighting how low livestock emissions are in the US, that they're just 3%, a figure I've seen before on like beef.com and other places, which is a wild contrast to the FAO's, you know, 14 and a half to 18% emissions range. And I'll do a whole video on that, that is coming up. But it got me thinking, what if we looked at the emissions for a carnivore diet? After all, if they're trying to use emissions to promote a carnivore diet, then why not check it out? And so what happens if we take all 327 million people in the US, put them on a carnivore diet and then estimate the emissions. Short answer, we might as well barbecue the ice caps, but let's actually look at the numbers. So the carnivore meat of choice is steak, which means we're having a conversation about beef. And I think we eat too much in the US at an average of 57 pounds per year, which is about 0.15 pounds per day. And a carnivore recommendation that I heard in the past was two pounds of steak per day. But looking at this, depending on the type of steak, that's under 2000 calories. If it's more lean, we're looking at around 1500 calories a day, that's not enough. And so calories is probably why a site like this says that it's typically two to four pounds of meat per day on the carnivore diet. That's 730 to 1,460 pounds of steak. And so that gives us a good range to work with. And you might be thinking, oh, well, is it really just steak? Couldn't it be other meats too? And from what I've seen, it appears that steak dominates this diet. Here's an article by hip to keto which says, what does one eat on a carnivore diet? Steak, steak, and more steak, where they say they just eat steak on a daily basis. I've seen this over and over again. And from nerdfitness.com, a write-up by a carnivore person, and the primary meat of choice for those on the carnivore diet seems to be beef. And the number two meat that they have on there is lamb, which actually has a higher carbon emission per pound. And they also focus on steak eating ruminants because they have a higher level of iron, etc. And finally, here's a direct quote from Sean Baker, meat diet proponent. He says he eats four pounds of steak every day. So we're gonna do the calculation for two to four pounds of steak, AKA beef, AKA cow bodies. For a baseline, our current national total is 57 pounds a year times 327 million people is 18.5 billion pounds of beef, which is a lot. On the low end of two pounds a day, Carnivore USA would be eating 238 billion pounds of beef a year. On the high end of four pounds a day, we're looking at 477 billion pounds of beef per year. All right, so where would that land us in terms of emissions. Well, to get a baseline looking at our current US emissions, we are right in at around 6,400 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year. So that's the number we're going to be working with. And then looking at beef from this environmental working group chart, beef is about 27 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilogram of beef. Now, where do they get that? They actually link a detailed report as to how they came to that figure. And I want to mention, I'm going with a more conservative number here. If I went to say the FAO's number from this paper, which is 68 kilograms per kilogram, it would be way higher. That's over twice as much. I chose this middle of the road figure so it wouldn't be immediately dismissed by anybody that was displeased, AKA on a carnivore diet. So the environmental working groups, 27 kilograms it is. And of course, since we're working in pounds per day, we can just translate that to 27 pounds of CO2 equivalent per pound of beef because it's just unit per unit. So of course I made a spreadsheet for this and I will link it below. It will be viewable, but not editable. There's the two pound and the four pound carnivore diet that gives us that range. And the result is an exorbitant amount of pounds of CO2 emitted per year, which then needs to be converted into millions of metric tons to compare it to our current emissions. So our carnivore diet emissions alone would range from about 3,000 to 5,800 million metric tons per year. Need I remind you that the current total is 6,400 million metric tons. So we are talking about one and a half to nearly two times all of the emissions of the US. So that's transportation, that's industry, that's military, everything 
almost doubled. And just out of curiosity, I figured why not throw in a row for the FAO's higher beef estimate at 68. The result on the low end, more than doubling, on the high end, more than tripling our emissions. This is insane. How do you like your earth? Oh, I like it well done or charred to a crisp. And yeah, these aren't perfect numbers. I mean, our food emissions are counted in the comparison of the original emissions, for example, but it's definitely within the realm of possibility to be doubling our emissions just because people want to eat a certain way, just one dietary change. And someone trying to poke holes in these numbers might go, actually that high end of four pounds a day just seems way too high. Uh, but the reality is no, and that's for two reasons. First of all is food waste. From the USDA, we waste about 30 to 40% of the food that we have. So even if people are averaging three pounds a day, they will actually be using four pounds of steak per day. Finally, remember, this is the US we're talking about. We have a, a tendency to overconsume, and estimates on this vary, but some credible ones go as high as 3,600 calories per day on average. That's five pounds of sirloin steak. So with food waste and our tendency to overconsume, four pounds is really not that crazy. But looking at the US, we are already one of the highest emitters in the world, so this would be a complete completely unacceptable dietary shift. And if your diet is not scalable upward into the whole population, then you should definitely be reconsidering it. And of course, a vegan diet by contrast emits way less than any other diet that's generally studied. I mean, looking to the recent UN report, it had the lowest carbon emissions, the most CO2 savings out of any diet they looked at. And I wanna keep this video short, but it becomes even more of a joke when you consider land use. We're already using about half of our lower 48 land in the US to graze and feed livestock. So emissions are just one way that this would be a totally unacceptable dietary shift. So if you care about the planet, if you have a single environmentalist bone in your body, please do not adopt a carnivore diet. And I haven't even touched on how cows are highly sentient, amazing creatures, or how we have basically no studies on this diet and health, long-term health, disease rates, etc. It's all anecdote. All right, stay tuned for my upcoming video examining that 3% figure for livestock in terms of US emissions. And feel free to let me know down below what you think about all this. You think we should, should go on a carnivore diet and just let the world burn? Yep. Or do you have another point of view? All right, as usual, feel free to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.